Hi, my name is Elaine, and in today's video, I am reviewing Drop Chef. Hello, and welcome back to my channel. So, as the title suggests, I am reviewing an Irish meal delivery service called Drop Chef in today's video. And Drop Chef is quite like uh, HelloFresh or Blue Apron, where they send you the ingredients, you cook the meal yourself, and usually the meals take like 20 minutes, half an hour to put together. It's an Irish company, and I'm gonna put all the details to them in the description below. And the most important thing you need to know about this review is that it is not sponsored. So I paid for this with my own money, and I'm gonna give you an unbiased, honest review. Um, and also, as a side note, I'm vegetarian, so it's gonna be of their vegetarian meal selection. So I don't know about anybody else, but uh, definitely in the past year and a half, Ronan and I have relied on takeaways at least once a week, if not once a fortnight, and mainly to break the monotony of being stuck in our houses, working from home, cooking the same meals, and just to kind of add a bit of something different every week. But obviously that habit gets a little bit expensive as time goes on. So I had a bit of a dig around online to see about meal delivery services, and I had always been meaning to try Drop Chef. So I decided to give it a go and see if it adds sort of a bit of interest, a bit of spice to our weekly meal prep and planning. So we went with the three uh, meal taster box to start. I'll give you all the details, the information, my final review, my thoughts, all that sort of stuff at the end of the video. But first, uh, I'm gonna take you to my kitchen and we're gonna make our first meal. So it comes in a box like this. And then I've already opened it out. So there's the three, there's the dog. <laughs> He's just staring at me. There's like the three main parts of the meals. And then it has like the recipe cards for each meal, which you can obviously keep. Um, and then in this part, which is like the fridge part, um, there's, that smells like basil. And then there's more little bits in there, like salad and cheese and stuff like that. So for tonight's dinner, we're going to make the roast pepper and spinach quesadillas, which apparently should take 20 minutes to cook. And yeah. We'll see what they taste like. So these are all the ingredients. Um, there's like peppers and cheddar and beans, spice mix, the tortillas, um, some spinach. And then I've just chopping the red onion. I'm about to crush the garlic. And the general gist of it, I also have the on oven on, which you can hear in the background. The general gist is that you fry the onion and the garlic and then add in the peppers and beans, and then add in the spice mix, cook, and then you uh, put the quesadillas in the oven, which is quite interesting, because I usually do quesadillas on a pan, but I'm gonna try them this way and see what they're like. And basically just waiting for the oven to heat up is probably the longest part. Um, and I'm excited. And then you can see like they list what the ingredients are here, so they tell you like a bit about it. It says it should take uh, only about 20 minutes, it gives you like nutritional info if you're interested, tells you like your allergens and then um, gives you all your ingredients and then it says like what you'll need so obviously like they're not going to give you olive oil and grease proof paper so you'll need those um, but you could probably use tin foil or even a baking tray and then that's what it's supposed to look like so we shall see they also appear to have is that like a beer that'd be a nice idea These smell incredible. I think they're pretty much done. I left them in for about 10 minutes in the end, but they seem to be done. I think that one's pretty good. It's very tasty from the bits that I stole. Mmm. That's very nice. Yeah, you like this. Really. What's your verdict? 11 out of 10 for taste. Very, very good. I feel like this is really like when we order quesadillas. It has that kind of a flavor. And 
so I really like that about it. But um, yeah, it's just really nice. So we're gonna eat this now, and I will see you on Friday when we make our next dish. Hello, it is Friday, and we are about to make tagliatelle with roast tomato sauce, pan fried halloumi, and a clementine side salad. So that's what we're having for dinner. And I have just put on the oven, which is the first step, and then I'm gonna stick on the tagliatelle to boil, and then I'll show you what we're doing with the rest of it. So these are our ingredients. We have basil and lettuce and a grey head and then we've got like loads of these pasta things which you can kind of see in there we have a red onion a, some dressing for a salad some tomatoes and some almonds and the last thing then is the halloumi. It's actually such a small amount of halloumi given the amount of halloumi we usually eat. Mm. But um, yeah, so, and then this is the recipe that we're doing. So essentially, uh, we preheat the oven and cook the pasta, then we dice and roast the vegetables, and then we make up the salad, then we toast the almonds, fry the halloumi, combine them all together, make the salad, plate the dish, and eat. We also have a chili. Which I'm now nervous about. <laughs> There's also Clementines. taste a bit. Uh, one mistake I made is I cut the onions way too small. Um, so they kind of disintegrated. So that's on me. Hmm. Can't argue with those flavours. Hmm. Really There's good. a really nice mix of flavours there. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's really tasty. Um, like the chili, you can taste the chili in it, but it's not like really blown the head off me or anything. It's just, it's really nice. Hmm. Okay, we've finished this. I'm gonna have our salad, and I'll give you a verdict on it after dinner. That was very good. Um, I haven't finished mine because it was a lot of pasta. I just couldn't finish, but I ate like the veg and a load of the salad and the halloumi parts, and then we have a little bit of salad left, and then. <laughs> Ronan's left his little bits of halloumi. I didn't like it. Um, I really liked that. It was really nice. I think there was probably a bit too much pasta. And then in the image, um, it looks more like that the veg... So they say to cut the red onion tomatoes into one centimeter pieces. But in the image, it, they look a little bit bigger. Like slightly more like inch pieces. I think that would have been better because the tomatoes and stuff and the red onion just disintegrated. So this is one that we will definitely try again. But I'll probably just have less pasta because it was a lot of pasta really liked the salad and it was so simple it was just baby germ lettuce clementines toasted almonds and then a dressing mix which was rapeseed oil and balsamic vinegar really simple but it was so tasty and even toasting the almonds like toasted almonds i forgot how amazing they taste um but yeah good result nice dinner and then for tomorrow there is a butter bowl which is a lot like a colder um dinner so what we've decided is we're actually going to have that for lunch because I don't particularly like dinners that I like a hot dinner. So we're going to have that for lunch and we will see you tomorrow. Hello and it is Saturday. Um, it's lunchtime. I'm still in my pyjamas because the day is just gross and I don't really want to start the day. I'm going to show you the weather before I cook this. rain all on our conservatory. The camera's making it look a lot nicer than it actually is. So for today's lunch, we are having a chickpea and vegetable butter bowl with a free range egg. So it looks a little like this. So there's a egg, tennis and broccoli, rocket, chili, carrot, chickpeas, 
um, the toasted almonds and then we just have to put olive oil ourselves. But the reason that we're having this as a lunch is that I just don't like cold meals for my dinner. I wouldn't be someone who'd like order a salad unless it was really hot. And it's not today and I knew it wasn't going to be today. So the first thing that we need to do is, so we have to toast the almonds and we have to like grate the carrot, chop the chili. Then we make a dressing with the chili and some olive oil. Drain the chickpeas, fry the broccoli, fry the egg, and then finish the dish by adding everything together. Um, and then it should look something like this. I don't think I'm gonna put ours separately. I think I actually might mix it all together or not, I'll see. But um, that's what we're gonna make. Be a hard one to taste test because it's so much better. Mm. It's good so far. Yeah. I think I'm gonna mix it all together, eat it, and then come back. Ooh, chili. And come back and talk then. So that meal was nice, but I don't think it was my favourite, and I think uh, it was slightly lacking, kind of in flavour. I guess like I like liked all of the parts, so like like eggs, broccoli, chickpeas. But I think that if I was making it myself and might have done something different. I probably would have turned it into more like um, a kind of like a like a Japanese flavoured bowl instead. Like we were saying that if I don't particularly like pan fried um, tender stem broccoli but I love oven fried or oven baked so I probably would have done that and then maybe baked the chickpeas in a dressing or something and then made, maybe made more like a miso dressing. Frank has joined us. Um, so now I'm going to go and have a shower and get cleaned up and then I'm going to come up with my final thoughts for this meal delivery service and I will come back to you then. Okay, now I'm going to give you my final thoughts and full disclaimer, uh, we've actually used the service for another two or three weeks after um, I recorded the other piece so I really, really have thought about these points. So first, I'm just going to talk about the pricing and I'm going to tell you what I liked, what I didn't like and whether I would recommend it. So what we, um, what the video you just saw, we had used the trial box. So in that you get three meals for two people and that's 47.71 is what that cost. And with the trial box, it doesn't differentiate between vegetarian or meat. Um, and then you can also do single person trial boxes or you can do family trial boxes. When you actually sign up, you can opt for either the uh, classic plan, which is a uh, meat and vegetarian based options. You can do the veggie plan or you can do the family plan. And then you can also pick how many people that you are ordering for. So the more people that you're ordering for, the cheaper the meals um, are per meal. And what's really good about Dropchef is that you're able to pause your subscription. So once you sign up, you can pause it at any time, you can cancel your subscription. Um, and then if you've paused your subscription, you can pick it back up at any point and order again. So here are some of the things that I liked. So the first was that it was new recipes and really good flavors. And one thing that it helped was it helped me to step outside my comfort zone because sometimes when I'm creating recipes, it's something that like maybe I'm craving, then I find a couple of recipes and I jam them together based on the ingredients that I have. With this, I only had a limited selection of things. So I had to pick new flavors that maybe I hadn't tried before or new flavor combinations, which was really great. Secondly, then it forced me to actually follow the recipes. So when I, I'm looking for recipes, I will pick and choose what ingredients that I have or ingredients I have access to. Whereas with this, it, it gave me all the ingredients. So there was no situation where I had to substitute anything. And that worked really well with the basil in the pasta because I would always be like, oh, I couldn't be arsed buying basil because it goes to waste and I don't like dried basil. 
um, but actually having the basil in it made me go and buy a basil plant. The speed of cooking is really good, so none of the recipes take longer than an hour. Um, so particularly if you're coming in from work, everything's there portioned out, all you have to do is cook it. And by the time you have the table set, and the dishwasher put on, the meal is ready. It also cuts down on food waste because all of the ingredients are individually portioned. So there's never a situation where you're left with a lot of carrots in the fridge or loads of salad. You use all of the ingredients that they send you. They also send really good quality ingredients, like the fresh veg. There was also a lot of organic tinned vegetables um, and everything tasted really good and was really high quality. And then finally, a great thing about it, and this happens with a lot of recipes, is that the veggie options were cheaper than the meat options. So for me, it's a tick, um, another incentive to be vegetarian. Um, but that was a really nice touch instead of being charged the same amount of money for a vegetarian as meat. So then the things that I didn't like. So the first is, and the biggest one for me, is the protein count that's in each meal. So I don't track calories, I don't track what's in meals, but I do always look, particularly if I am creating a, or, or I'm following a recipe, I always look to see um, the protein count because I often find that in vegetarian meals, the protein count is often really, really low. And for me, protein, fats and fibery, fibrous carbohydrates are things that really keep me full and keep me sustained after a meal. So that is something that I always look out for. And what I found is that the, not all of the meals had very good levels of protein. So I kind of look for about like 20 grams a meal, and um, but some of them didn't even have that. Having said that though, there was never a situation where I'd finished a meal and I felt hungry. But that's also because I looked at the protein count on all the meals and I picked the ones that had the highest protein. That's something that I find with a lot of vegetarian meal uh, recipes. I sometimes find that the recipes are almost the same as the meat version, but just without the meat protein, um, but you really have to kind of bulk it up with something else. And if I was recreating some of the recipes, I'd probably put in maybe more beans and pulses or put in an extra protein source into the recipes. Unfortunately then as well, the selection for the veggie meals. So if you are on the original plan, uh, you get uh, eight options. So you get four, you know, meat or fish based options and you get four vegetarian options. But obviously on the vegetarian plan, you can only pick from four meals. So if you're picking three meals a week and you don't like two of them, you're kind of stuck with something maybe that you don't like. Another thing was that there was some cold meal options. I don't really like cold food for my dinner. You'll see um, back in the kind of vlog section of this video that when we had the cold option, we used it as a lunch, which is fine. But I, um, I would reckon that that's probably more to do with the summer and that maybe coming into the winter, I'd love to try out some of their recipes because um, they might have kind of more like hearty, kind of like more stew based or one pot kind of based meals that are, are more wintry. Um, but I just don't like, as a preference, I don't like cold uh, meals for my dinner. Um, the other thing then was the plastic containers. So they made, they've made huge efforts to be as sustainable in their practices and also to do with uh, cutting down on the amount of like plastic and unnecessary packaging that they use. Like they have brown paper bags is what the stuff comes in. There's like biodegradable, biodegradable packaging that's on a lot of the veg, like, you know, if it's spinach or whatever that they've added in. And the majority of kind of like the beans and pulses come in tins, which are easy to recycle. You can also give them back the, the big box that the food comes in and you can give back, like there's um, a freezer thing in it and then a silver pouch, which you can return to them, which they then reuse again, which is really good. But there were some instances where like little bits of maybe sauces or things came in tiny little plastic containers, which can be recycled. But I just would love if there was maybe an option where sort of um, they could do something where um, everything that they had could biodegrade. And I know, like I'm sure that it's a process and it's something that they're probably working towards. Um, but they also support like local farmers, they use organic produce. So I wouldn't kind of knock too many marks. It's just something I suppose for me, if I was doing it every week, um, it's extra things that are going to recycling rather than sort of being broken down. Uh, second last point then is a spice warning on things that are really hot. So there was never really a situation where it was super hot. Like they would give you a chili and then I knew that if it didn't want it to be too spicy, I wouldn't put in the seeds. But there was one spice mix on one of the, the recipes that we tried after we recorded this video. And it was so hot that I couldn't eat the meal. And I just wish there'd been like, three chili symbols or something on it just to denote. And they did say it in the instructions, like if, if you find it's too hot, maybe don't in add in as much, but I just didn't anticipate it would be as hot as it was. 
And then the last point then is also about the recipe cards where there's no measurements on the recipe cards. So I only realized this towards the end and I jotted down the measurements um, on the side and I guess maybe they don't want to put measurements on it so that you keep coming back for more from them. But it just would have been great um, because I have cooked some of the, the recipes since but I had to kind of guesstimate some of the measurements um, based on the images and what I can remember from when I cooked them. Finally, would I recommend it? Yes. Uh, particularly if you, like me and Ronan, were in a bit of a food rush, had been kind of relying on takeaways and spending a lot of money, Drop Chef is a much cheaper option than spending money on takeaways. Um, if you're vegetarian, the, the points like the protein and stuff, I just take note of and maybe try it out. If you're a meat eater, I would 100% recommend Drop Chef. When we finished this um, test and the test box, we went on to order three more uh, weeks of food with two meals per week. And we really found some really nice recipes. I really felt like it got us out of that food rot. And while we haven't continued it, we may uh, return to it again every now and then, maybe once a month or, you know, once every couple of weeks, just to kind of give us a little bit of something different um, and a bit of excitement to our everyday meals. Um, but yes, I would recommend it, particularly if you're looking for a meal kit. Um, this is one of the only decent options, I think one of the only options available in Ireland at the moment. And yeah, I'd give it a go. Even just try the trial box. If you don't like it, don't continue it. Um, but if you do, I don't know, tell them I sent you, even though they don't know who I am and this video, they don't even know I'm making. Um, but that's it. That is it for today's video. I hope you liked it. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more from my channel, please click the subscribe button. And I will be back with another video sometime in the near future. Thanks for watching.